menu book number 32 collection Supra. Three models to collect Supra 30 GT from 88, Supra RZ from 97, the new Supra RZ from 2020. Let's see what they have to say about them. For this menu, you need to collect models from Toyota Supra series of sports cars. I would like you to get a feel for the Supra's history from this first generation 1988 model to the GR Supra in 2020. I'll tell you more about them once you've got all three. Come see me when you are done and I'll give you a reward. Okay, let's find out a bit more <clears throat> what trucks, what cars are eligible. So world circuits, uh, it's a bit too loud. Oh, so we will be driving in all three, Americas, Europe and Asia, Oceania. Uh, let's start with Americas. Actually, let's see what cars can we win. So that's the old Supra. Okay. What can we win in Europe? At Circuit de Saint Crox, the new Supra. Okay. So in Asia, Oceania, we'll have a chance to win the the famous Supra. And I think that's the one I want to win first so that I can use it in other races. Because why not to? Okay, so 700 or less, that is probably quite powerful car with 700 pp and aspiration turbo. So let's see what's eligible. I don't know what the uh, flashing things are. Are those the cars which are eligible or the cars which need some tuning? Probably cars which require tuning. Uh, tuning required. Okay, I can see there is a legend there down in the right lower corner which explains that. Uh, can we sort it maybe by performance points? Oh, so I can even use uh, <laughs> for GT. Interesting. Uh, GT GTO Twin Turbo. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the R32. That's already tuned to some degree. Um, how many, how well tuned it is that uh, GTR? Uh, 594 and the twin turbo is 600. Uh, I think I will tune the twin turbo uh, a bit more <clears throat> and that's the car I'm going to use. A GTO is so nice. So let's jump to a tuner um, right here. Uh, actually, no, one of the things I learned is that spoiler gives quite a lot in that game. So let's customize that car first. Give it uh, a wing. Maybe give it everything around if there's something nice. Actually, I like the one in the color of the, of the car. Some of the sides. Um, it blends in nicely, so it's not kind of vulgar. vulgar. Um, so we can have wingless standard part or. See, I don't like that spoiler, uh, but I'm aware that it gives so much probably. So maybe low. Yeah, low is low is definitely the the most subtle option. Something which doesn't really show off that much. Mm, I think the one with the side, that side pots or whatever it's called. That's kind of missing something. This one's quite nice, not too big. Let's purchase that and install. And, okay, that doesn't look too bad. Can we actually paint the wing in the same color of the car? Uh, I'm actually not sure. Uh, custom parts, no, that's what we... 
Is it in the uh, delivery editor? Like maybe having the <clears throat> the twink. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I don't know where, but having the twink painted in the color of the. Okay, we can do the decals for that. Uh, for the twink, cannot can we paint it? Am I missing something here? Oh, that paints the wink. So if I would like to keep it red, which red is it? Looks like this one. Oh, that's very pinky. I think this one looks quite good. Yeah, okay, let's just keep it as it is. Um. Oh, I can't use it without the part. Okay, let's just save it. Okay, now this uh, this rear wing blends in uh, as it's the same color. Um, okay, let's close that. Yes, please. And let's not waste any more time here. Move to the truck. What is the state of that car when it comes to the maintenance? Uh, all excellent, lovely. So now we can tune it all the way to 700. We are at 606 at the moment. I won't be getting anything from the extremes, but there are a few things which are probably worth installing here. Oh, that brings us down. <coughs> Interesting. Looks like I have to go quite expensive to bring it uh, higher. Give anything? Actually, it doesn't doesn't do anything. Anything I would install actually reduces the PP. So seems like I have all the parts. Okay, that's quite improvement. 10,000, that's not bad. But those are not cheap. Those are not cheap improvements, are they? Tires to have in that car. Sport softs. Maybe it's time to get racing. Uh, Twenty-seven thousand for uh, that brings us quite close to seven hundred. Um, okay, let's get that. I don't think there's anything I want from here. That's not even an improvement.
that is for just 9000. That is as well, though a very slight one. Those are very expensive upgrades for the GIF. Let's get this one. Okay, so we are at 695.58, so it's uh, very close to 700. We can, I think that should be enough, hopefully. Let's go straight to racing. <clears throat> As I said, we'll start here at the Suzuka. Just have a quick look at the car details. All looks good. Let's enter. Let's find out more about this race. So it's five laps at Suzuka. Oh, four guys to listen to. And let's have a quick look at the assist settings. So we have manual. Traction control at zero, of course, but ABS should be off in that car, I guess, as well. So that's all set up. Let's listen to Fraga. I race in an 80 Supra. Supras from this period looked particularly cool and are still popular today. When I lived in Kanazawa, my father drove a fully tuned Supra just like this. He sent it back on a ship when we returned to Brazil. But unfortunately, its whereabouts are still unknown. Oh, that's unlucky. Mangano, my favorite car is the Lancer Evolution. It's a four wheel drive car and I really like the tech that allows power to be distributed to each wheel independently. In this race, I'll be driving the Evo 6, the same car Tommy Makinen used to drive. Kokubun. I've tuned up a rotary engine RX7, RX7. I like racing, of course, but I also really love cre uh, creating car liveries. Gizal, uh, the first and second corners at Suzuka feature uh, in the AAI-1 license, so international A A1 license test for which I'm the instructor. Braking while turning is really tricky. I'm sure it is actually. Okay, let's give it a try. Let's move the brake balance to the front. I prefer it that way. The car behavior should be a bit better under braking, especially without the ABS. Twenty-eight seconds to the first one. Okay. Five laps to get that twenty-eight seconds back. Either it's the traction of this uh, racing sports, racing soft tires or four wheel drive. That's the Lancer Revolution 6 he was talking about before the race. P7. Of gear. Now, do we have to brake here? I guess we should brake here just in case. Mm. 
13 seconds, so that was from 28 to 13, just, just one lap. Okay, that, is, that was really quick. That's no ABS. Why it's not driving at all? I had to use the clutch to actually start it. Lost a lot of time. So that was quite a heavy braking without ABS while negotiating corner and I completely lost that car. I have to play the recovery game now. Quite busy here. Let's try to quickly overtake them. avoid further mistakes, uh, catching up the first one uh, shouldn't be a problem. Breaking in the corners without ABS so so hard. So I drop it down to ten seconds. And I'm not really sure why that was too fast. seconds of the first one that's uh, Ichikawa and it started raining I'm on slicks great that's something I did not foresee and that's Mercedes AMG as well okay I wanted to say that hopefully it was just a few drops, but it looks like it's going to rain more and more. I still have traction, so I better use it while it lasts.
because this is lap 4 of the 5 so if that rain gets stronger at last lap may be a nightmare Fast here, but I wasn't too wet. That rain actually didn't do any harm because the, the previous lap was the fastest lap even though that was the lap where actually it was raining a little bit. Well, it started on lap 3 but continue a little bit through lap 4. So even if the weather suddenly changes I don't think that will, that will harm us in any way. I didn't look my wheel and I'm, whenever I'm braking I'm actually... The wheel drives away from my... <laughs> sorry, my chair. I didn't look my chair and uh, whenever I'm braking, because that brake is quite hard, uh, because of the load sill, my chair actually drives away from my wheel. So it's a bit hard to drive that way. Especially hard when I'm trying to do heel and toe. That's when I push myself the most. I can see some sun, but it doesn't matter now because this is the last corner and that's the finish line. First in the first year uh, race, and uh, we had the Mercedes and GTR on the podium. That was a good payout. Uh, hopefully, that paid for all the upgrades I purchased. Drive it marathon done, so that our uh, roulette of the spur ticket, three star. Uh, I'm not expecting any good rewards from this one. And as the Supra, uh, I think I'm going to stay in GTO. Uh, just because it's tuned and I would have to probably spend a lot of money to get that Supra up to the reasonable performance point level. So let's forget about it. Maybe maybe there will be chance to use it in, in different races. So, race number two. That would be Europe. Europe, 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 uh, France. 
I wish I could tell that I know the race track. Um, that would be quite interesting. Uh, the car is set up, everything is the same as on Suzuka, so let's just race. Is there anyone to tell us anything before this race? Three guys. Uh, Miyaza Miyazono is the first one. I've switched from an Impreza to a WRX, but even though I've changed my car, I'm still Subaru through and through. I hope you get to take part in our rally someday. Uh, I've tuned my car up to make it more competitive. No, oh, that wasn't much. Lenoir. Today, at long last, I've switched to a Nissan GTR. I've already won prizes at French Grand Turismo competitions in the past, so I'll be trying to best to do the same here. Okay, there wasn't much to listen to, so let's race and let's try to get 70,000 prize. Maybe this time I can do actually a clean race and get some bonus though, as I said. I know that racetrack was in Gran Turismo Sport and I vaguely remember it, so hopefully I'll be able to perform More or less I remember these corners, uh, so I should do just fine. Breaking points is a different story. Aston Martin DB11, that's a beast. What is it doing here with this uh, old Supras, Subarus, GTRs? I didn't want to uh, cause any trouble here, so that's why I slowed down. Same here, like what is he doing? Did he think he was on some kind of drift competition? It definitely wasn't. It's just a straight race. It feels like that car is just too fast for them. But it is within the performance uh, points level, so I'm not really sure. third and this is just lap two out of four of just five seconds to the first one <laughs> he outbreak me that's nice okay it'll take a bit longer to overtake him maybe here on the outside yeah that should work. Now I know that this next corner is usually uh, 
full throttle one, but I'm not sure if I want to take a risk. I think it should work. I lifted a little bit this time. I knew, I wanted to say this is going to be a hard corner without ABS. And I had to, if I wouldn't press that brake pedal harder as I did, I wouldn't slow down enough, so I had to do it, and that's what caused this uh, half spin. Luckily, it was still in the direction of, uh, of driving. That's a nice Mercedes. But even though it has German V8, it's lacking the power of the GTO twin turbo. So yes, braking uh, in the corners without ABS uh, requires a lot of precision. Try the full throttle now. As I said, I'm pretty sure it's possible here. Now I lift it. <laughs> oh, it was still too fast. Well, maybe maybe I'll manage on the fourth lap and. I'll do it properly. But I think that costed me a clean clean race bonus being out of track like that. Sorry, that cost me. I was a bit too late on brakes here. But it wasn't anything I'll be losing sleep over. Still on P1. little twitches there that corner were due to braking. That's how it behaves without the ABS. Uh, it's a constant fight with the car. Second gear should be just fine here. Yeah, this time it was good. Ah, 
and it was too fast. <laughs> A wrong angle, entry angle was uh, was quite wrong for that corner. And the exit was compromised, but at the end of the day, it's a win P1 with quite a huge advantage over the second. And it's time to move to the last choice of that uh, menu book. That's the nice new Supra. Thank you very much. And we're going from Europe to America. Don't remember which race truck it is. We are, we are going to find pretty soon Autodromo de Interlagos. So we're going to South America to Brazil. And here we can win the old 88 Supra. So again, the same car, the same settings. Let's race. Third gear, always a good starting gear for those cars. Uh, three guys to talk to, Yamanaka. I like cars with a tendency to oversteer. It's easier to find grip at the limits of the rear tires than the front. That's why my Supra has been set up just the way I like it. I won't be trying to pronounce that name, I'll, I'll butcher it. Toyota has produced all sorts of legendary cars including the AE86 and also this 80 Supra. It's a popular car in the US to this day. And Rodriguez if I could pick my three dream cars, the Nissan Skyline R34 GTR would be in second place. The long nose housing the straight six engine is its most famous feature, but the rear is pretty cool as well. I actually don't like the rear of the 34. Uh, I find the 33 to be much nicer. now when they're to front rather than um, somewhere in the balance territory. Oh, third gear should be fine for now. I want to Bounce from the Mercedes. Patience and the attack when there is enough space on the left. Smooth so far. I really like Interlagos, it's a really nice truck. That braking point here comes much earlier usually than expected. And it's uh, hidden of the shadows. But I think I was still braking a bit too early, so that can be delayed, and I'll try to delay it on the next lap. At least we have something from uh, Japan in the P1 
one and that's the RX-7 which really is a great car I wish Mazda introduce a new model of the RX-7 especially they have a They had a racing program in the United States of America in IMSA with the Ma Mazda DPI car. So it's not like they don't have a racing heritage or anything like that. I wasn't too good, but again, kept it on the truck. like a third or fourth time I uh, miss shifted today the, the gear did not engage uh, of course that's my fault uh, I released the clutch too early to go smooth lap I was lap oh I'm saying was still lap four out of five but we'll be crossing the finish line in a moment uh, and I'll be starting the final lap of the race
and that's pretty much it. Uh, final lap, 22 seconds of advantage. Lift gear, just so I can put it in. Easy win. I think the Suzuka was the hardest. Uh, a few mistakes day before I got used to that car. But overall, uh, quite an easy menu book, especially in comparison to the Porsche one, which uh, gave me some trouble. And finally, a clean race bonus, so that's extra uh, around 25,000, I think there was. 94 and a half, so there's 24 and a half thousand extra. And that's the last of the Supras acquired for the collection. Menu book completed. So much clicking just to get out of the race. Uh, Yeah, let's go back to the... I wish there was a kind of shortcut to get to the menu book straight away. But I don't think there is. At least I don't know about one. So here we are, the three Supras. When I was young, the 97 Supra was a dream car. It was really, really amazing. I think it still is, just doesn't look... doesn't look that aggressive. And... Uh, like it used to. After all, it's an old car. Congratulations, you've got all three cars. This completes your Supra collection. Once you've collected your rewards, I've got some stories to tell you about these cars. And our roulette ticket. Four star. Not having high hopes, but maybe we'll get something nice. So, menu book number 42, collection Supra completed. We will be able to hear a little bit about the scars. The Toyota Supra has long been a firm favorite among those who love sports cars. Known for combining a powerful straight six engine with a rear wheel drive layout. It is faster and more powerful than its fellow Toyota, the 86. It also contains plenty of the essence of the 2000 GT, the legendary Toyota that first appeared in the 1960s. That was a beautiful car. The Supra also has a long association with motorsports. For example, the A70 Supra from 86 took part in the domestic touring car races in Japan as well as international rally events. Its successor, the A80, made its debut in 1993 and would go on to make ways far beyond its Japanese homeland, even appearing at the 24 hour of Le Mans. That's something I didn't know. The Supra gained an extra level of global fame when it was featured in the Fast and Furious movie franchise. Sales of the A80 were discontinued in 2002, meaning that this GR Supra is the first Supra in 17 years. Developed in collaboration with BMW, it's a whole new Supra for a whole new generation. And menu book number 33, Championship World Touring Car 600. And that menu book uh, I will leave for the next stream, so not for today, but before I say my goodbyes, let's go to garage. And first of all, let's see the uh, car collection so we can clear those pointers. Uh, everything we got was from Japan, so the 88 one. The 97 one. Curious what's the difference between the 97 and the first models from the 93. And the GR. I like the color. Blue looks nice. Uh, how many PP? 545. 545 straight from the straight from the saloon. Okay. And the two red tickets. Let's start with the free store first. Not expecting anything special. I think it was only once or twice where I got something better than the worst reward. And I can tell straight away that it's going to be the worst reward again. 5,000. 
Oh, 10,000. Okay. And the four star roulette ticket. That Mercedes would be nice. I would really appreciate it, but unfortunately not this time. And that's what, 20,000? 30,000, okay. Still. That would be all when it comes to Gran Turismo 7 for today. So I would like to thank you all for watching and I will see you next time in the next stream from, well, I don't know if it's going to be Gran Turismo 7 or anything else, but yeah, have a good evening.